Hey, hey, I look like Double Egg, you know, from the Splatoon manga? On second thoughts, I look nothing like Double Egg. What was I even thinking? Hello, still incredibly small number of people who are going to watch this video. This video is about why I think the Tetra Julies suck in any kind of competitive setting. Right, let's have an overview of the Tetra Julies. Tetra Julies are arguably the most unique weapon in the Julies class. They have four dodge rolls as opposed to the usual two for Julies, and their unique dodge roll mechanic is that they- oh. Don't cheat on you! I mean, come on, how hard is it, Brad? They slide roll, which means that you can shoot and roll at the same time. You can see this in lots of my clips. You would think that this slide roll would make them really broken because shooting and rolling is something that they deliberately didn't have present in the other Julies. Until you realize that their shots are slow enough that it is useless to try to shoot at somebody whilst dodge rolling in more than a hmm, might as well do it, capacity. The only time when you can really dish out damage is when you're using a different weapon. In reality, it's only post-roll, which is difficult because you have to stay still. Staying still is always a bad thing in Splatoon because dodging is one of the most important things in the game. Chargers in any other game would be really, really powerful because they can one-hit kill and their projectile moves at almost hit-scan speeds. Please don't hate me because I said that chargers weren't broken. Yeah, I get it, a good charger can be annoying, but they're not broken. Sometimes it do be infuriating though. But they're not broken because this is Splatoon. You can dodge really, really well. There's even a weapon dedicated to that. You might think, surely staying still can't be so bad. Chargers and splatlings practically do it all the time. And that's when you realize that the Tetra Julies don't exactly have the greatest range. If you think of the close range slayery type weapons, you have the splatter shots, you have the dualies, you have your rollers, brushes, although brushes are less slayery, but they all have either high damage output or longer range than the others. But the Tetra Julies are really the closest range. The Julies are slightly shorter range than the Splatter Shot, of course, to balance their dodge roll as well as their four shot kill compared to the Splatter Shot's three shot. But the Tetra Julies have even less range than the Julies, which means they really can't fight rollers and brushes because they can just outrange them. The Ink Brush less so, it's easier to fight Ink Brushes, but. Octobrush has like the same range as you and can has its traveling mechanic and has a higher damage output with easier to hit shots. You just think, why would you use the Tetra Julies when you can just use the Octobrush? Yes, it has a slightly different playstyle, but the function is relatively similar and the Tetra Julies paint less well, so why would you ever use them? I get that brushes are different to Tetra Julies. They have different mechanics and you might be better at brushes or better at tetra julies but if you're really better at tetra julies then why can't you just play julies they dodge just as well because the short dodge rolls and slower dodge rolls of the tetra julies mean that it's easier to track your shots onto a tetra julies user than a regular julies user which reminds me any good player will be able to track their shots onto any Julie dodge roll, so you can't really use them for dodging. That's why I said competitive setting and not casual. At a casual setting, yes, you may be able to dodge roll and then people won't be able to hit you, but at a higher level, people will be able to, and that's why you just can't get away with it. Even at X rank, I can find myself being killed when people track their shots onto my dodge rolls, with any Julies. And if you think, well then what's the point in dodge rolls, we come to what some people call the two styles of using dodge rolls. They call it American style and Japanese style. I call it, I absolutely suck, I mean we flipping elected Trump, although to be honest my own country isn't much better with Boris Johnson, and hey we actually invented Splatoon, maybe we flipping know how to play it. Basically, American sucks. What they say is that American is using the dodge rolls you know, what they're called, 
dodging. And Japanese is using them for chasing down enemies and running away from them. Running away from them is very important with the Tetra Jewelies because you have the extra distance. It's slightly less good than the regular Jewelies, but just as important because of your lower fire rate, less powerful. You can also travel more distance with the Tetra Jewelies, although it's slower and usually the distance matters less as opposed to speed in these situations. You may have noticed the other thing I said you can use dodge rolls for, which is chasing people. This is what the Tetra Jewelies are best at. That's why a lot of people would call them a flanking weapon, as I would. They can use their mobility to chase down opponents with a power that no other weapon can match. And you can't even match it with your ability to chase down potential dates. It's really their strength. It's just not balanced out with their weaknesses. You want a weapon that can do at least a few things, rather than just one thing, even if they do it really well. An example of another weapon like this is the arrow spray, which is very weak at anything except turfing. It's considered to be a terrible weapon, and yet the Tetras aren't, which is strange. Another example of a weapon which is a specialist, but this time performs well, is the Hydra Splatling. Its only role is defense. It can defend a point, and it can do that very well. But it's good at its job, because it can defend, and it will always defend. Well, as the arrow spray, its turfing always gets interrupted by other turfing weapons, which can actually fight. And the Tetra Jewelies can't always secure kills on a flank, and they always die. Hey, I get they don't always die, but you know, the nature of flanking kind of lends to dying a lot. My point is proved by the fact that you can find a million builds for Tetra Jewelies with all quick respawn on the internet. Let's do a quick search of Sendu.ink. As I expected, top three builds all have at least one main or one sub of quick respawn. It's not even that good of an ability, come on, it takes two deaths to activate. And think, if you're getting two deaths without dying as a flanker- Two deaths without dying as- Post editing me be like, why the flip did I say two deaths without dying? That doesn't even make any sense. But as I was gonna say, two deaths without getting a kill as a flanker, then maybe you're not doing your job properly. I can understand a death without kills, occasionally the two, but if you're getting two so regularly that you need one main and three subs of quick respawn, maybe you're not doing your job properly. Maybe you just suck at Tetra Jewelies and maybe you should just quit Splatoon forever. But that's all I have to say. So let's have an overview of everything wrong with Tetra Jewelies. Number one, low shot power and slow shots. You can't kill well at close range if you don't have power. Number two, you have to stay still to do damage. Staying still is a very bad thing in Splatoon, and you have to do it because otherwise you just won't do significant damage. Number three, short range. Your range is incredibly short with the Tetra Jewelies, shorter even than the Jewelies. Number four, slow rolls. Your rolls are slower than the regular Jewelies, which means they're less efficient at dodging. Number four, long roll cooldown. The cooldown after rolling is incredibly long, and it means anybody can easily kill you after you've exhausted your four rolls. And finally, number five, dodge rolls aren't actually good at dodging. At a high level, people will be able to track their shots onto you. And that should be just about it for this video. Oh wait, there's one more thing. What stupid things happened during the clips and did you notice them? One, feels bad man. I mean, that's me, so I feel bad. Two, I mean, come on, rolled into the bomb. Three, off the edge we go. And that's it for this video, for real this time. I hope you came away not hating Tetra Jewelies, but realizing they're not very good in a competitive setting. Don't get cooked, stay off the hook. Remember to leave a like. Tetra Jewelies dodge roll is so slow, even Wash can dodge roll faster than them. Go on Wash, dodge roll. Very fast.